Welcome back to the SDG Media Zone from Davos, Switzerland. We're broadcasting live on UN Web TV. And it's my pleasure to have here uh, Mr. Chris Skinner, uh, author and independent commentator on FinTech, the intersection between financial markets and technology. Good afternoon. Welcome. Thanks so much for being here. So banks, how can they align their work, their corporate strategies, more with the sustainable development goals? How do we get that alignment so that banking can really help drive progress to the SDGs? Yeah, I mean, a lot of banks have been talking about sustainable finance for a long time, uh, as well as corporate governance and environmental impact of their investments. But they talk a lot, and it's really kind of demonstrate what they're doing. And I think the issue right now is there's no real governance oversight around sustainable finance investments and activities. So a bank can say they're doing something like investing $100 billion in renewable energy, but they might have invested $100 billion anyway because that's a growing market that's investable. So it's really saying how can we make sure that that's aligned with moving away from things that are unsustainable to things that are more sustainable. And you've, in the past, you've pointed out some differences between how banks are approaching this in Europe and North America and uh, versus the developing world. Can you tell us a little more about, about those distinctions? Well, the developing world um, often comes out and says, you know, Europe and America, you've been uh, destroying this planet with gases for over a century and we're only just starting, so it's not fair. Um, but equally, some of these countries are now turning that on its head. So we often think that China's a marketplace that produces a lot of plastic and a lot of damage to the planet. And yet the Chinese government has just announced that plastic bags will be banned by the end of this year, as will plastic straws and single-use plastics. So they're really taking a strong action around this area. And equally, because a lot of the businesses in China, India, Africa, South America are fairly new in terms of their deployment of technology, uh, particularly in finance, um, they're doing things radically differently. So you know, China's almost become cashless just in the last seven years. And that therefore gets rid of a lot of paper, everything's going digital, that's more sustainable. And if we're asking financial institutions to become more sustainable, to embrace the SDGs, how do they overcome this contradiction between the short-term profits, the strong quarterly results they have to produce, and then the more long-term horizon of the sustainable development goals? How, how to balance those two? That's uh, the, the $64 million question. Mm -hmm. um, it's a really difficult one, and you know, I don't know how long you've got, because I could take hours on this one. But I'll keep it short, which is um, you know, banks are driven by shareholder value, and therefore they can talk about stakeholder value, but to align their business and their investments and their uh, conscientiousness and their purpose to sustainability, the SDGs, to society. It's very difficult when it is that short-termism shareholder return that's driven the executive team and the whole focus of the institution. And I think what's going to happen over the next decade is that governments, because they regulate and give banks licenses, will start to say there has to be far more accountability around banks' SDG activities and how they align financially with responsibility and, it, and prove that they are delivering and not just talking. Uh, I actually met one bank recently um, from Australia, in fact, that now has uh, every executive owning one of the SDG goals as part of their executive mandate and their bonus. It's aligned to those goals. And I think that's what we're going to start seeing a lot more of. That's great. And then how much of this do you think is really driven by customer demand? I mean, do customers really care about SDG commitment of their banks? Historically, no. Um, you know, there have been some uh, ethical banks around the world and they've gained um, a boutique niche, uh, but not mainstream. Um, because customers, once they have a bank, tend to stay with that bank forever because it's just you know, the place where they leave their money that they can trust. Um, but it's interesting now when you look at Gen Z in particular and the next generations of customers, the youth, and they really are looking for purpose in the planet. And you know, Greta Thunberg's just spoken here, a teenager who's saying that you know, the older generations have destroyed the planet, the youth will save the planet. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what they're going to look for in um, not just banks and um, business, but in their career and in, the, in, in their life. They want a purpose and to see that the businesses that they do banking with, that they work with, that they invest in, are aligned with their, their own ethos and outlook. And I think that will become more and more mainstream. 
Yeah, and we are really kicking off a decade of action for the SDGs since we have only 10 years left to the 2030 deadline. And everyone has a part to play, including banks. So can you just wrap it up and tell us what exactly can banks do to help us achieve the SDGs? And how can they transform banking so that it is in line with SDGs and helps us achieve those goals? Well, I think we're seeing a lot of that activity already happening. So, for example, uh, the no poverty um, goal is already being um, delivered by technology and digital reach. Because if you look at, for example, India, um, then it's gone from 35% banked in 2012 to 80% banked in 2018. Just in six years, everyone in India is, is getting a bank account because they have digital mobile wallets. We're seeing the same across the world. At the start of this decade, 2.8 billion people were unbanked. At the end of the, the decade, 1.8 billion, so a billion people have been banked around the world mm -hmm. because of digital reach, because you can serve people digitally for almost no cost. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing that becoming more and more uh, of, of a main activity. In China, for example, WeBank's gained 200 million customers in five years, and the cost of serving those customers is less than half a dollar each because of it's all automated. Um, and that's what, what I think is going to be an interesting area to watch. The other really interesting area to watch that I spend a lot of time on is peace, justice and strong institutions. And goal 16.9 is about a legal identity for every person on earth mm -hmm. um, because you know, a third of people on earth don't actually have any recognition that they've been born because it's not recorded. Uh, and again, using mobile apps and technologies and shared databases through cloud, we're seeing a lot of focus by 2030 of having everybody recorded with a legal identity and once you have a legal identity, you can do finance, you can do banking, you can mm -hmm. travel across borders because you're recognized as being a human being. Mm -hmm. We need to see much more of that. Mm -hmm. Fascinating to hear about the role of banks in all of these goals. So thank you so much. Thank Skinner. you. Thanks a lot.